Hello, and do not change the channel. Are you a loser? Do you just sit around tweeting about Bernie Sanders all day like some fucking dipshit, thinking that your words will make any kind of a difference? Do you do improv? Do you do stand-up comedy? Do you... Do you, uh... Do you do Instagram stories where you... Whatever other horse shit where you're making pasta or other bullshit no one cares about? Why don't you... Give a call to the CIA. We got a lot of people we need you to kill. And we got mind control. We're gonna control your mind and make you do assassinations. How's it going, David? I'm all right. I just want to say if you're uh, year three of talking about your web series where a cat is also a therapist that's going nowhere, mm -hmm. your dick doesn't work, and you just want to fuck all night, yeah. we've got MK Ultra, and we can help you out with that. Yeah, we'll hypnotize you into thinking that your dick works. <laughs> and it's actually, that's all it is. It's just confidence. <laughs> yeah. We'll hypnotize you into having confidence. Because the thing is, with your dick not working, once you, once you get that thought in your head and you go, oh no, it's happening again. Then you're creating the reality. Exactly. So if you just kill a couple people for us, down here at CIA, at the CIA, ever dream we'll of give you the confidence that you can get an erection. <laughs> That's right. You can go down to Latin America, kill any leader that you want, full yes. erections, full chub. Yes. Rock hard. Any democratically elected Latin American leader who wants to build libraries, bye. <laughs> See you in hell. We got to get our banana company down there. <laughs> we got to get those bananas for a fair, for a, a nice price. Anyway, how are we doing, everyone? How's it going, David? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I like this music subscription that I bought. Mm. You got to spend money to make money, you know? Did you, like, search, like, CIA, or how'd you get that song? No. For the low, low price of $75 a month, you can get... You get access to about 30,000 epidemic mm. sound is the company interesting you get access to about 30,000 tracks mm. and um, yeah you can you, you can do you can do whatever and how did you find that track specifically though you can browse by mood Go oh so got it just, yeah you just click mood mm. and then you click suspense mm. and then you there's subcategories you click it's uh, pretty easy to yeah. use yeah I should be uh, they should be paying me to say this but they're not mm. anyway well, today's episode, we're trying to take a break from uh, our from uh, from our dumbass election. <laughs> and uh, if you guys know, David Spector was just on the uh, the premium episode. Um, if you could, uh, if you could get over to Patreon.com, we're losing subscribers very fast. So if you guys could uh, offset the cost of all the subscribers that I've lost in the past couple weeks, give me five dollars. I'd really appreciate that. And. Uh, yeah, so, so, um, all right, just real quick, mm. we'll talk about the election a little bit. Mm. Iowa happened. Yes. Yesterday. They still Sorry. haven't, what time is it? It's seven o'clock Tuesday night, mm. and they still haven't released the winner, the winner mm. of the Iowa, um, caucus. Yeah. Uh, release the winner. There's also a buzzing in this, in this, uh, <laughs> in this recorder. I don't think it's going to show up on the show. Mm. But, but you're hearing uh, it in your ear. Wish I was dead. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to take a look into history, and we're going to talk about um, Bobby Kennedy's assassination. Mm. Now, before we do that, the past couple of days did make me think that if anybody wants to kill Bernie Sanders, mm. they could, they would mess it up. If the Democratic Party tried to assassinate him. Yes. Yeah. They they're like, incompetent. Yeah. Yeah. They would get just like I don't, Hillary Clinton shooting her own face off, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't even be. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if she's personally has she. Do you think she's personally killed anybody? I don't. Not like with her own two hands. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she has. Maybe she loves it. <laughs> she's just in a ski mask every. Uh, you know. What if she's like, she has, but it's not even like politically motivated. Like she's mm -hmm. responsible for like. Uh, just like uh, there's like a bunch of prostitutes that got killed on Long Island, and they never found the guy. And oh, it's, and it's just her. Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. All right, so let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to 
Well, first of all, I mean, I don't know. I'm think I, I'm I'm at a I'm at another point mm. in my life where yeah. I want to just take a uh, take a break from politics mm. and forget about it. Yeah. Um, you know, I haven't had sex in a while. Mm. Uh, my dogs are hungry. Yeah. Um, I owe everybody money. Mm. I owe people money all over town. Yeah. So you're so an uncut gems right now. I'm an uncut. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just need to um, I need to get it together. Yeah. Uh, but there is another there is another pro- let's. There was another primary election, mm. maybe about what fifty years ago. Yes, yeah, yeah. Bobby Kennedy had just won California. Yeah, he did. The convention was in Chicago. Mm. What is the deal with the convention? They they change they change the location every um. Yeah, so the the party just picks like a different. Uh, it's like the Super Bowl or something. Mm-hmm. They just pick a different venue every year. Mm-hmm. And when Bobby Kennedy was running for president back then. It was at this weird in-between stage where there was primaries, but mm-hmm. primaries didn't really matter the way they do today. Mm-hmm. And the uh, party insiders, I mean, I guess it is the exact same. They just mm-hmm. picked who they wanted to be president. Give me one second. Sure, sure. I'm doing my podcast. Oh, sorry. Okay. That's all right. Somebody... All right. Yeah. No, I'm on yeah, my yeah. way home. All right. My, my new job is wonderful. Tell me what you need me to do to help you get that video. What video? And, uh, your, the tape or whatever. Oh, okay. But, yeah. So like, you want to get a new camera? You Can want you pick to... up some maybe some pita chips? Okay, sounds good. Or some pita uh, bread. Pita bread. We got or that hummus pizza. in the fridge in the refrigerator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's so warm outside. Are, it's is weird, somebody yeah. there? Yeah. Are you oh yeah, we're uh, recording. Okay. This uh, might even make the show, honey. Oh boy. Okay. Well, uh, I don't have anything interesting to say other than that, but that's wonderful. All right. Don't bring any cookies or. T- Snack cakes home. I've been doing very oh. well with my diet. Oh, okay. So I'll just eat them all before I get there. Perfect. All right. Love you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Thicken up. <laughs> um. Anyway. Can you buy me a loft apartment in Tribeca? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. Yep. Later that day, Mike killed himself. <laughs> he realized he'd never be able to <laughs> provide his fiance <laughs> with a. He could not buy her a loft apartment in Tribeca. <laughs> he shot himself. You just op- da- Honey, I'm doing this for you, not for me. <laughs> you just open your laptop and put it all on your credit card and then just shoot yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got I d- fulfilled your wish. Enjoy it for about a month before some repo guys come in. Yeah. Um God, what a fucking nightmare. She's not happy enough. This is a this is a nice enough place. Yeah, no, God this is a great it. place. People don't pe- people don't understand like like, like, are you ever like around wealthy people and mm. you look at all the shit they have and you're like, yeah. oh, this is nice. Mm. The point, the point is not to, you should just be, the point is not to be like, how do I get here? Yeah. You're never going to get there. Yeah. They, they, people get lucky and people have family connections and that's it. Yeah. Totally. No one, no one, only Alexander Hamilton has ever worked himself, has ever pulled himself up from nothing. But probably, I don't know anything about Alexander Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> just be happy with what the fuck you have. Jesus Christ. Definitely. Also, you guys got a nice yard. You got the rooms here. Yeah, it's all right. The two dogs. Find a new man, bitch. I ain't about this shit. I mean, I ain't about this life. mm. You ask him to make more money. (laughs) You know, I'm perfectly happy driving up to New Hampshire making two (laughs) hundred (laughs) dollars to perform stand up. (laughs) Anyway, all right. So, um, okay. So Bobby Kennedy, he's on fire. His brother's dead. His His brother's killed. Yes. Five years before, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is funny how how easy the Kennedys are to kill. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> it's like duck hunt or something. Yeah, they're like in a final destination thing. Like I yeah, think their life are. is constantly. They're either just got killed, about to be killed, or were killed. Why is that? Uh I mean, it's, I mean, I guess if I had to guess, it, a lot of it is probably because uh, the mob. I mean, mm-hmm. their dad was a bootlegger, right? Right. And probably just some The horrible... mob just planted a tree on a ski slope somewhere, and they were like, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> They'll never find out that it was me. <laughs> they just perfectly placed a tree somewhere so that he would crash into it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, but but I think what's funny is, like, mm. I, I don't really know that much. I'm learning, like, yeah. from doing this podcast, I've learned mm. more and more about them. Yeah. Like, what, what kind of is their place in American history? Because it seems like 
John, you know, Jack and Bob, you were mm-hmm. like really, I don't know. It seems like they were, even though they, you know, they gave our man Jimmy Hoffa a hard time. Mm. Um, it seems like they wanted to do good. Well, my, and again, there's a lot I don't know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't want to come off. I'm probably going to get shit wrong or whatever. I don't mm-hmm. want to come off like an expert, but listen. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I wanted to say this before I started the show. This this show is getting harder and harder for me to do. <laughs> I, I, I tape the show every Tuesday. I try to put out episodes consistently. And every fucking like mon- every Sunday, Monday, I start freaking out. I'm like, I don't have a guest. Mm. I have to, you know, like, what are we going to talk about? What's the topic going to be? And then I like, honestly, I wish that I could just have... I part of me wishes that I could do a show where yeah. I like do extensive research and read mm-hmm. multiple books and talk to people. It's never going to be that show. Yeah, I'm probably going to change the format of the show pretty soon because mm-hmm. this is driving me insane. Yeah, and it's ruining my life. <laughs> um, but 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 also like it's hard because I do about. I mean, just to give you a little peek behind the curtain, mm. I do maybe three, at least three or four. I have to do at least three or four hours of research. Yeah, every episode. I would. And I even would that, hate that. But even that, like. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm back in school. Mm. I mean, this is prison. Yeah, this is why kids kill. This is especially Chinese kids. This is why they kill themselves. <laughs> because the, because making somebody do making somebody learn stuff. Learning is fun, but when you make somebody do it, mm. it's a nightmare. Definitely. But you're making I'm so yourself happy I'm not learn in school. stuff. I I'm so happy I'm not in school anymore. Oh yeah, same. I would oh, never boy. never go back. Yeah, yeah. But um, what is their place in history? I mean, Camelot. And, like, so they're looked at as, like, the first, like, dynasty. Or not, but they are a dynasty, mm-hmm. like an American dynasty. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, so American royalty. They're mm-hmm. part politician, part celebrity, part, like, they were looked at as, like, you know, like, gods on earth or something to yeah. certain, you know, or the way the press treated them. Yeah. And so JFK's father, Joe Kennedy, I believe was a bootlegger. Yeah. And That's how he got rich, I guess. Yeah. They also sold steel to the Nazis. That, okay, and I think that Joe Kennedy was put in charge of like FDR put I him. I can't in wait charge. for this fucking dog to die. <laughs> Stop it! Come here. I don't know why you're doing this. He didn't bark all day, and it's like as soon as the I start taping the show, he doesn't shut the fuck up. I'm gonna fucking kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Anyway, uh, thirteen years old. Oh, uh, how much? How much longer does he have to live? Uh, hopefully. Long, long time. No, I want him dead now. <laughs> I've, <laughs> like, I just fantasize about only having one dog in the house. Really, the one that I actually love. <laughs> yeah. What's those little dogs? They always fucking bark. They're, yeah, they always go nuts. He's he's a lot. Mm. Uh, so he had j- his teen mother, and uh, you know he makes life miserable for everybody. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So. Joe Kennedy, I think FDR put him in charge as like I don't know about Treasury Secretary, but he was some sort of oversight guy in in FDR's administration. Oh, pretty, okay, I'm pretty sure. Then Joe Kennedy, I mean, he's got all this money from FDR. Uh, was like Joe, I like the way that you, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that you so- made liquor in your bathtub. <laughs> you got a role for you in the U- in the United States. I think it was also in Wall Street and shit, or maybe it was okay. his father who was a. I'm pretty sure they were into okay. bootlegging. To so he's degree. the one that we should actually respect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Just then, his kids are dying left and right. <laughs> he's surviving it all. So, and then Joe Kennedy gets a taste. He wants all of his kids to be president, basically. He mm-hmm. wants them all to go into politics. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that was groomed to be president, uh, Joe Kennedy Jr., he dies in World War II. Oh. He was going to be, he was supposed to be president. Okay. So then it's JFK. Yeah. He buys his he buys JFK like a US house seat and then I and he buy and then JFK rises to I think he be, buys him then a senate seat. When I say buys him, like literally mm-hmm. just rigged it, uses mm-hmm. money to whatever. And now then, here's the crazy thing about yeah. that type of personality though, right? There's a uh-huh. few people I mean I'm just, like like we've we've seen people in American history and in in, in recent history in current yeah. you know, that that are like I'm gonna be president. Yeah. yeah. They've had it mm-hmm. in there. It's been their number one goal. Yeah. These psychotics, mm-hmm. right? But for every person that we hear about, there must be thousands more. There must be at least fifty thousand more. Yeah, They're, that that are probably like well into their fifties or sixties, mm. and they're just in a basement somewhere. <laughs> like I'm going to be fucking president. <laughs> well, I think a lot of those they're just people... reading Harry Potter, being like, someday <laughs> I'll get my. I just have to tweet. I'm already up to two hundred seventy four Twitter followers. <laughs> I just have to and put out climbing one every more, day. 
put out one more blog post about why mm. hip hop is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm there. Um, so yeah, so then JFK becomes the president. I'm and just gonna respond to Chelsea Clinton one more, a few <laughs> more times. I'm just gonna ask. Yeah, that's how you build. That's how you build a, a following. Get a private message, one more 18 year old for feet pics, mm-hmm. and then I'm there. Right. Uh, so you know JFK, and then. Uh, Ted Kennedy, same mm-hmm. deal. Dad buys him a Senate seat. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the chrono- chronology all fucking off for this, mm-hmm. but basically he buys he buys his three kids uh, places in the government. Mm-hmm. And, uh, three of his kids. Mm-hmm. Then there was Rosemary Kennedy. She was uh, mentally disabled, so he got her lobotomized. Mm-hmm. And there's more to it than that, and there's some question of was she really mentally disabled or mm-hmm. what, like, what the fuck was going on there? But He's whatever. Like, yep, I- she's mentally disabled. <laughs> <laughs> he just caught her <laughs> masturbating one day. <laughs> he was like, "Well, time for a lobotomy." Apparently, she would just like they would go to like meet ambassadors and stuff, and she wasn't good at like all remembering all the fucking like remember to curtsy here and all mm. that stuff. So it's like mm-hmm. we're scooping out your brain. Mm-hmm. You're you're embarrassing the Kennedys, mm-hmm. and he didn't tell he didn't tell his wife or children that he was going to do it. Mm-hmm. He got the lobotomy uh, on his own. So for her. yeah, for yeah. her. Oh, nice. So uh, respect. <laughs> so JFK goes on to be president. He um, there's the Bay of Pigs fiasco. Yeah, where he tried to kill Fidel T- Castro and overthrow the Cuban government. Mm-hmm. CIA, mm-hmm. Uh, CIA mission. It fails. Now, what happened with that? Like JFK kind of like half-assed that. It was like uh, there's people who know way more than me, but yeah. my understanding was it was a CIA operation where they got Cuban exiles to go back and try to overthrow the government. And most of the, you know, like many CIA operations, it just blew up in our fucking face. Yeah. The way they, you know, the CIA, which has also created Al-Qaeda and ISIS, you mm-hmm. know, it's all that kind of stuff. So yeah. then uh, that this creates friction with him in the CIA. He's, it's crazy you think of the CIA as this sort of like shadowy, like, you know, these, mm-hmm. these operatives that can like do anything and overthrow governments. And yeah. Cuba was right there forever. Oh, yeah. Just no, you know? That's why... Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like these people are never as competent as you give them credit for. No, no. I mean, sometimes they do horrible things, and mm-hmm. they do get away with it. But yeah. a lot of times it's just a spectacular fuck-up. Like, look, anything going on in the Middle East, you can pretty much blame the CIA for. Mm-hmm. Um, Middle East and Latin America, it seems yeah, like. They, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, we overthrew so many uh, Latin American elected socialist governments, replaced them with dictators. Mm-hmm. And you think they'd be doing it in like Australia you know, <laughs> or New Zealand where people are a little more gullible. <laughs> you mean you want to give you want to give us a, uh, our own president? <laughs> yeah, they just tell the president went to sleep or something and yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. she's gone now. OK, bye bye. Listen, she's on vacation. OK, we got this guy for you. She said she he's, never loved you, and she's going away forever, but mm-hmm. she's very happy. She's living on a farm somewhere. Yeah. So this creates – Bay of Pigs fails. This creates tension with JFK and the CIA. He starts trying to, like, clear house, mm-hmm. and then JFK is assassinated. Mm-hmm. And there's many conspiracy theories about that, mm-hmm. but what a, a lot of people don't talk about – We don't about, care about that. We're just glad he's gone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, now, during uh, a part – now – this is funny because like if Trump ever did this, people would lose their fucking minds. But yeah. Kennedy's attorney general was, was his brother, his brother Bobby Kennedy. Yeah, and this is interesting. Even so, back then, Bobby Kennedy and JFK, uh, Bobby Kennedy was very right wing, mm-hmm. very law in, in certain respects, very mm-hmm. law and order. Okay, he was he kind of was the one of the him and J Edgar Hoover spearheaded the whole we're going to just bug and wiretap everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Kennedys, if you saw the Irishman likely used the mob to win the election and mm-hmm. then started immediately turning on the mob. Yeah. Um, JFK once, uh, it's recorded him saying, the problem with Bobby is that he's a cop at heart. JFK said this about his about brother. About his brother? Yeah. Really? Yes. Wow. And Bobby Kennedy, so... A cop meaning, like, he's he, has, he doesn't have any loyalty. He's kind of, right, like... That and he just like he likes to go after people and he, he likes, likes to, to go after people. He likes to incarcerate all that law and order shit. That was Bobby Kennedy. Right, right, right. And um so they're going after Martin Luther King, they're bugging him, he's giving all the orders. Mm. Um there are other that guys a real troublemaker. 
Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's funny because yeah, and they went after mm. Jimmy Hoffa too with all the labor stuff. Jimmy Hoffa, exactly. Yeah, people, you would think like if you actually were on the left and you wanted power, why the fuck would you go? Yeah, I mean, I guess the other side of that argument is that the the, the unions were like insanely corrupt. And yeah, they were getting it was getting a little out of hand, but yeah, I mean, they got corrupt after. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that is that is true, but it's like. You know, the Republicans would just let them, if they had them on their side, they just let them get away with anything. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, just keep giving us votes and shit. You got to play ball a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So Kennedy's didn't do that. Very law and order guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby Kennedy's kind of right wing. Mm-hmm. His brother gets assassinated. Mm-hmm. And then. Now, that is a very, like, rich kid thing to do, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're like, like, the mob helps you. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, see you later. <laughs> and you just put them all in jail. Yeah. This it's won't come like back a... to bite us in any way. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like there's there's is like a, I don't know. I mean, I mean it just like something to me like like loyalty is a pretty. It's just like what you do. You just don't you mm-hmm. know. You just don't give up your friends and. It's also just this mentality of like, oh, we'll use the mob to put us into power, mm-hmm. but they're bad and we're good, mm-hmm. even though you're the same. Yeah. You 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 know you don't like the mob so much, don't use them. Yeah. But uh, so. And, you know, like Kennedy beat Nixon like by a hair and the Chicago mm-hmm. election. Uh, there's this guy named Daly. The Daly's control Chicago. Most people consider it to have been a fraudulent uh, result where they were like, you know, stuffing ballot boxes with dead people, mm-hmm. which I actually I've been trying to round up all of my like my friends who have died and then my friends who have friends who've died and mm-hmm. see if they're still in the voter rolls so I could vote for Bernie as them. Oh, in nice. precinct. So if any listeners have friends who died, send yeah. them in. Uh and, um, so where was I? Yeah, so they start going after the mob. They go after the unions. Uh, JFK dies. A lot of conspiracies about that. And then Bobby Kennedy doesn't have anything to do. He stays on under Lyndon Johnson for a while, but eventually Lyndon Johnson hated the Kennedys. He mm-hmm. wasn't going to stay in the administration. Okay. So uh, Bobby couldn't go back to Massachusetts to stay in politics. They didn't have any openings for, like, senator. Mm-hmm. So he moved to New York. Mm-hmm. He did what Hillary Clinton did after uh, she was first lady. Right. Moved to New York, stayed he never lived in. He's got that thick accent, mm-hmm. and he's now the senator from New York. Mm. And as senator, Bobby Kennedy is still the same guy for the most part. And there was, like, in this documentary, Bobby Kennedy for President on Netflix, uh, where I'm getting a lot of this from, there's, like, a lot of, like, influential black leaders and writers and stuff met with him in his apartment. And they were saying, you know, the Vietnam War and everything that's happening with civil rights, we're not going to vote for – we don't want to fight in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And then Bobby Kennedy's like, how dare you turn your back on your country like this? And, you know, he was – he had that mentality. Right. He would have been at this time like a vote blue no matter who type of fucking idiot. Right, right, right. So – Idiot. Yeah. yeah. It seems like they yeah, they were very much like like neo libs, the Kennedys. Uh kind of, for their time. Mm. Yes. They were esta- they were the establishment. They were established, yeah. Yeah. But uh I mean they became the establishment uh uh for sure. Now Bobby Kennedy at some point and it might have a little bit to do with the fact that Lyndon Johnson, the Vietnam War was a disaster. Mm-hmm. Lyndon Johnson was uh his popularity in the Democratic Party had plummeted. Mm-hmm. It didn't appear that he would be able to win any primaries as the president. Okay. So Lyndon Johnson decides to not seek a second term. Mm-hmm. He had finished Kennedy's first term. He had won his own election. Uh, he decides not to run again. Mm-hmm. So this creates a, like a vacuum. Now somewhere— How long did he serve as president? Uh, I think it was like how long— He finished Kennedy's term, however long that was. Uh-huh. And then he had four years of his own. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then Bobby Kennedy— he starts to have this awakening yeah. where he opposes the war. He starts talking about working people way more and mm-hmm. like uh, addressing real stuff. He Cesar Chavez, the the farm uh, leader out, the farm activist, the labor leader out in California, very famous. He uh, Kennedy would mediate disputes between Cesar Chavez and the farm owners when mm-hmm. he would do strikes or whatever. Kennedy would mediate those, and he became very, very close friends with Cesar Chavez. Mm-hmm. And like at one point, Cesar Chavez was on a hunger strike to get better conditions for farm workers, and he said he wouldn't break his hunger strike until he met Bobby Kennedy. Mm. So Kennedy goes from this like you know super rich establishment, um, you know, cop mm-hmm. to total one eighty on civil rights, 
total 180 on like working people like really starts uh gets to this sort of awakening how much of it was genuine and how much of it was uh political i think i think there was some I think there w- there was definitely a genuine element to it. I think he kind of like evolved a little. Mm-hmm. Like it may have started off political, but then once he started like seeing conditions up close, right. and he would do shit that no one else would do. He would go and have like a campaign stop, like in a deeply uh, rural, poverty stricken area of like maybe Appalachia or something like that, mm-hmm. and just like bring reporters there and be like, nobody reporters never come here. Like yeah. kind of the campaign that Bernie is trying to run mm-hmm. right now. So, uh, and Bobby Kennedy, and he has. A ton of credibility with like so uh just the most diverse working class genuinely like when uh when martin luther king uh was assassinated uh bobby kennedy broke the news to uh an all-black audience and he read a poem by i think heraclitus it was a very powerful speech and you know they were sent people were crediting him with like uh just the way he handled it and you know i don't know what was 68 is when mlk was killed yes yeah and then so all this is going on and he's running for president and it's him it's a guy named george mcgovern and it's lyndon johnson's vice president hubert humphrey Mm -hmm. humphrey is the hillary clinton of the scenario he's the establishment guy he's the guy they're all gonna force in Mm -hmm. humphrey isn't even participating in the primaries Mm -hmm. and like back then uh it was, was he running or or no? He was running, but back then, so like primaries didn't mean as much now. Mm-hmm. Where like uh, back then, it would just be you, there would be primaries, but the party leaders would just at the convention shove in whoever they wanted, mm-hmm. and it wasn't and it wasn't like a uh, uh, the way they that kind of thing happens now, where they pretend they don't. It was openly this is how it works. Mm-hmm. So the point of the primaries is if like you run and you get a lot of you win a bunch of those, you can hopefully get party insiders to push you in and not the the establishment guy okay so that's what kennedy was doing so humphrey not in the primaries kennedy and a guy named uh george mcgovern i think mm-hmm. was were in the primaries mcgovern was um because he ran against nixon in 72 no, no no not mcgovern then i've got the wrong guy you're right you're right it's um fuck i'm forgetting the guy's name uh shit i that's all right we know uh, it was a guy though it was definitely yeah yeah, yeah. It was definitely a guy. I do want to look up his name, but he's running against this other guy who um, the other guy made his whole I can, thing. I can look it up. He made his whole thing about opposing the Vietnam War. Uh, that was and, This other guy. Yeah. Okay. And he was getting – so where Kennedy got a lot of working class people, d- very diverse uh, backing, this other guy, because of his staunch anti-war stance, he was getting a lot of the like – college kid white mm-hmm. college kids mm-hmm. he was like kind of like the elizabeth warren in terms of his support where it's usually just like white educated people we're all going to him right not to was and, the vietnam more popular back then it was eugene the, mccarthy eugene mccarthy thank you okay it was a very that's a complicated question in some yeah ways i mean there was the huge anti-war movement mm-hmm. a lot of people were very fed up and disaffected but also Vietnam had the government misinformation around that war. I guess the closest we would get to is Iraq. Mm-hmm. But even back then, the press and the media was way more gullible. They mm-hmm. bought the government's line. There was way more propaganda. So the right. lying and the sheer manipulation around it was possibly – it would be equal to or greater to what we got into uh, in terms of like flat-out distortion of reality that we had with the Iraq war. Mm-hmm. Um so there were, you know, college students, people who could be potentially drafted, mm-hmm. uh, certain veterans mm-hmm. came out against the war. There were a lot of working class people, though, a lot of more conservative people who were in favor of the war. Mm-hmm. It's the same divide as now. So mm-hmm. in certain ways, I think it was. I can't I don't. It was it. There were definitely people There were supporters. There was very vocal supporters. And then if you look at like who actually won the elections, it might seem like more of the average person might have been in favor of the war Mm -hmm. but uh it's a complicated question okay and so kennedy's running against mccarthy uh mccarthy's whole thing is that he opposes the war uh seymour hirsch famous uh journalist uh really good he was uh mccarthy's press agent i think Mm -hmm. they had a whole thing like cut your hair put on a suit to go out and campaign for mccarthy he got like all these like college kids to like look normal to represent him and then bobby kennedy he was just beloved by Mm -hmm. just like most people at the time 
Uh, He's like, listen, you smelly fucks. <laughs> Get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Whatever you say. So Kennedy is running against McCarthy. There's only a few primaries. Mm-hmm. Kennedy uh, loses, actually, to him in Oregon. Mm-hmm. He became the first Kennedy to ever lose an election. Mm. Uh, and then... Boy, bet Joe wasn't happy about that. No, but it could also mean that Joe was not rigging it for him. Uh-huh. It could all, it, that could mean he actually was going his own way and was actually trying to be uh, legit. Mm. Then he goes on to win in California, and, which makes a ton of sense. California, a very diverse state. Kennedy was very, very popular. I mean, he was out there all the time uh, helping farm workers. So Kennedy's bringing in these kinds of people that, like, Bernie's always talking about bringing in, like, people who don't vote, mm-hmm. you know, uh, very economically downtrodden, diverse, working class base. Kennedy was doing it back then in the 60s. Yeah. So he wins uh, the primary, and he has a victory party. Mm-hmm. So and California was like a big deal. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, he had just lost the previous primary in mm-hmm. Oregon. In Oregon. California okay. is a big state, and Kennedy wanted to, you know, you want to, it was a, it was a big, big deal. Mm-hmm. So now would the, any of this have mattered at the convention where the, the establishment just shoved in whoever they wanted? Who no one can ever know mm-hmm. but that you know kennedy was running to be the dem nominee and he wanted to it wanted it to be him and not the sitting the currently current, the current vice, vice president. president it's not even like with biden where four years have gone by right like it's the guy who's in office in at the office, time yeah. he's vice president right so big victory party mm-hmm. uh bobby kennedy obama told joe not to run right for president yeah and uh, last election he mm-hmm. told him to sit out mm-hmm. he's like uh joe your kid's dead don't do it. Mm-hmm. And then this time around, Joe told They're him. They're going to use it against you. <laughs> Just imagine Trump being like, folks, he's got a dead kid. His son died of brain cancer, folks. He can't even keep his son safe from brain cancer. <laughs> I heard the Clintons gave him brain cancer. Yeah. So then, um, so Kennedy wins. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then this time around when Joe uh, start, was said he was going to run, Obama was like, you know, you don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. That was his. Uh, really? Yeah. That's what he said to him. Yeah. Right. And he hasn't endorsed him. It's great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so then we have, so Kennedy wins, Bobby wins. Uh, what is, what is, wait, but just to, if we can get off track for saying, why is Joe Biden running? Uh, I think like there, okay, so have you ever heard of like, there's a weird way I'm going to get into it, but have you ever heard of the, the ship of Theseus sort of Greek riddle thing? Mm, no. Okay, so. Uh, they, it's this thing. I was where busy fingering women when I was in there. <laughs> I went to New Jersey State School actually. <laughs> well, it's this uh, ancient Greek thing where it's like, okay, so if you're on a ship, right, mm-hmm. and then a wooden plank falls off and you replace it, and then mm-hmm. another one falls off, and then eventually all of them have fallen off and been replaced, every single plank on the mm-hmm. ship, is it still the same ship? Mm-hmm. That is Joe Biden's body. There mm-hmm. is nothing. Uh, none of the original Joe Biden is left. His right. skin is different. His teeth. His hair. Right. His eyeball. Like he's just. He's Joe Biden. He's in- like, I'm indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, baby. I got new teeth, new bones, <laughs> new hair. <laughs> he Time does. to be president. You open up his chest, and there's just a computer like yeah. uh, mainframe. <laughs> I have a theory about Biden. I, yeah. I I feel like maybe one of his advisors was like, "You got to like be like Trump a little bit. Just mm-hmm. go out there and like s- like not give a fuck. Yeah, maybe insult people a little bit. Totally. But it was so funny how Trump never insulted the voter base. He exactly. always connected with them. And yeah. like, I, I mean, I don't know. That must have been for someone who was just shitting on everybody the whole time. He was always he he always reached the electorate. Well, Trump always tells his fans, "I love you." Yeah, and that love. Yeah, yeah. I do think there's genuine reciprocal love between them. Yeah. And then but anybody who'd protest, yeah. It would be like when we get heckled and then we we shut down the heckler and then the, if it's a good show and the crowd is on our side, they love that we shut down the heckler. Yeah. Never never happened to me. <laughs> every heckler has beaten me. Every time. <laughs> I just have a meltdown and I get a call from the club the week the Monday after. Where they're oh. like, what happened? Why can't you be a professional? You wished cancer on a guy? <laughs> You know, his mother was in the audience, <laughs> and she has cancer. You'll never work at Rooster T. Ha Ha's again. <laughs> so, the, so yeah, but Biden will tell somebody, just anybody, go vote for someone else. Yeah, Even if great. they're, like, going to vote for Joe Biden, it's like, hey, that, fuck you. That's a good point, too. It's almost like, because I was in upstate New York one yeah. time, and I was at this gas station, and, like, Trump was on TV, and I said something about him to, mm-hmm. to the lady behind the counter, and she was like, 
No, I know, but I I really do think that he like wants what's best for us. There yeah. there is like a connection there, and it's also um like what like I think with Biden, it is kind of like about him. Mm. It, it like it is sort of like a him patting himself on the back. Yeah, that and with I, Trump, there was sort of like I'm doing this for you, yes. even if it's even even if it's not authentic, which it's probably not. No, people feel that way. Definitely, a hundred percent. I would say that's a hundred percent. I mean, my, my grandmother's had like an awakening. Yeah, like I I feel like she's been like, why have I been supporting these cucks my whole life? <laughs> this, you know, this guy's the real deal. Yeah, and that's the real tragedy. Where if like if Bernie had been the nominee in sixteen, yeah, it would have been a different election. Yeah, but it yeah. would have been the anti both non-establishment yeah candidates yeah and it wouldn't have shaken out like i think a lot it would have shaken out differently over mm-hmm. who went with who and, yeah 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 burton would have won absolutely but instead we got you know got one of the funniest tweets i saw like mm-hmm. after yeah like the day after the election yeah on, or it was a facebook post somebody was like i love how everybody's like oh I'll vote for Hillary, but not enthusiastically. Maybe show some more enthusiasm <laughs> next time. Like, what do you want me to do? Push the button harder? Yeah. I'm just like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> do you know how I'm fucking embarrassing wear a it t-shirt. is? I dress up like her when I'm at the at the polls. <laughs> <laughs> just in drag. <laughs> what the fuck, you idiot! You you're a moron. Yeah. Yeah. Also, what? In- how can you be enthusiastic? Yeah. She's her whole campaign was you fuck you. I don't want to do anything for you. Yeah, it's insane. Then you see a scumbag like Rick Wilson, who's like you know this mm. one of these like never Trump. Yeah, yeah. Republicans and um, man, I hope they're they're probably egging his house right now. Like tr- like MAGA people are probably mm. just outside his you know, but uh, yeah, when he like he had some tweet where he showed the data of Bernie Bernie people. It was the number of Bernie people. Yeah, who didn't support Hillary. Mm. And the margin that Hillary lost by yeah. in every state. Mm. And he was like, thanks, Bernie. You're welcome. You know what? Yeah. A second chance at Bernie is better than eight years of Hillary Clinton. Yeah, yeah. I- I'll say that. But he's me. saying it like it was his like it was his fault. Oh, yeah. Like he shouldn't have he shouldn't have ran. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's insane. It's just like the, the thing is, is like it's just especially with these kinds of Democrats. Stuff it's, like that makes me lo- makes me like Trump. Because, yeah, he sees through all these condescending, hypocritical, yeah. clickish, petty assholes. Mm-hmm. And he's able to put them in their place immediately. Mm-hmm. Bernie could do that, too, I think. And yeah. I think he uh, – And but they, they'll just never – it's more about being able to be smug to Southerners than it has anything to do with, like – actually fixing problems mm-hmm. they want the problems to continue because then they can, can they can be the woke guy yeah you know there were the woke woman who's like did you know that uh you know this tv show is con- whatever yeah. it is they what they don't want to fix anything they want to mm-hmm. be smug and superior to people mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. want and also like i've never hillary clinton is just one of the most petty human beings like who fucking blames the person they beat yeah. in election for their loss it makes no yeah. sense yeah yeah right well, let's talk about the day that mm. Bobby Kennedy finally got what was coming to him. Totally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he should have supported the war. Yeah, exactly. Our good old boys out there. Um, all right, so, he, so he's, he's at the Ambassador Hotel, mm. and uh, he gets got. Yeah. Now, um, so they so they tackle so this 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 uh, this Jordanian refugee, this guy named Sirhan Sirhan. He's twenty four years old. He shoots Bobby. Mm-hmm. They they tackle him, mm-hmm. and then um, uh, and then he dies. I guess he dies there, or he dies later. Mm-hmm. I don't. But but anyway, there's a lot of controversy around around that assassination, and yes. um, so there's a few things, mm-hmm. right? The first thing is there's um. Well, can we tell them a little bit about uh, Sirhan Sirhan for a second? Go ahead, yeah. So, sir, he was Jordanian or was he Palestinian? I read that he was Jordanian. Okay. But I read that he was like, but so Bobby can't, Bobby's assassination was right mm. after the um, seven, the, I guess the Seven Days War, whatever yeah. it was in 1967. Mm. So yeah. it, was, it was like a year after, mm. right, 1968. And uh, that was like like when Egypt, Jordan, and I think Lebanon yeah. uh, went to war against Israel. Mm-hmm. Israel won, yes, because they had God on their side. Uh-huh. Um, no, I mean I guess they had weapons and whatever. They weapons had, and God. And God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, they had weapons. They had and, Old Testament God. Yeah, 
guy that wasn't fucking around. No, not that pussy ass bitch <laughs> who lets himself get crucified. <laughs> yeah, pussy, <laughs> pussy ass Jesus. <laughs> hey man, we all just gotta get along. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> yep, that's right. We beat the. Um, yeah, we should start a rumor that the Italians killed Jesus. I mean, didn't that technically happen? Yeah, the yeah. Romans. Yeah, I'd yeah. like please take some of that heat off me and my my and my yeah. uh, people. You fucking wops! You killed Jesus. <laughs> uh, I got a comment on one of our mm-hmm. YouTube videos about because we did an episode on Tommy Patera, who mm-hmm. was like so his nickname was Tommy Karate. Yeah, and uh, he was a enforcer in the um, Banana family, mm-hmm. and he killed like a lot of people. Yeah, uh, he and he also like learned karate. He mm-hmm. like went to Japan and studied karate. Mm-hmm. And just like didn't, and just used it to murder people. Usually, karate is about you know like yeah. just self defense and whatever. You learn it so part. you need not use it. Is their motto, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, we got, so, and, and apparently the the Tommy Karate's like origin story was that he had a very high voice and he was mm. bullied. Yeah. So we were, I guess, we like made some jokes about his voice or whatever, and mm-hmm. I get some comment that's like. You fucking no balls radio guys make fun of his voice. Why don't you do it to his face? <laughs> <laughs> and like that's funny on like so many so many levels. And I just wrote back, we can't, he's in jail. Well he's locked up for the rest of his life. Bye. <laughs> See you later, you fucking karate loving pussy. <laughs> <laughs> fucking loser with your nunchucks. Suck my dick. You're in jail. You're never getting out. And nobody, nobody you know can hurt me. Um. Anyway, see, this is why I want to take the show in a different direction. <laughs> you're just, I don't think I'm going to get hurt, but... <laughs> you're just taunting the mob. <laughs> right. I don't think I'm going to get hurt, but you never know. There's somebody who like wants attention or wants to make a name for themselves. But I love that logic because I want... Because I didn't... I mean, that, I did write back. Like, he's yeah. in jail and he was like proving my point you're a punk but it's like okay but if we do an episode about al-qaeda or isis mm. do i have to say that to their face oh please do yeah please take the sit down to uh uh to syria and just like <laughs> hey i got something to say to the leader of isis <laughs> you can't even hold a hammer the right you can't even hold a rotary hammer the right way <laughs> You fucking drill like a girl. You drill those ancient artifacts like a bitch. That's right. I said it right to your face. What are you gonna do? Some, but like, yeah. But this guy Tommy Patera. I mm. mean, uh, I mean, look. You know, we're all people on this yeah. earth trying to figure it out. Definitely. But I mean, this guy killed a lot of people. He, he chopped the woman's head off. Um, I also love just the guy defending the his freezer. honor. Like he's yeah. a fucking murderer. And it's like, hey man, don't lay he's off a his mass voice. Murderer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, there's there's a line, guys. Mm. Um, Why don't you yeah. pick a fight with that mass murderer? But that's such a weird. But that's such a weird logic to be yeah. like, oh, you're a pussy because you're talking about somebody who's like an actual, who is an actual tough. Now, lo- now look, I wouldn't want to fight Tommy Patera. I'm yeah. sure he'd probably, you know, kick my ass and mm. then, and then, you know, like eat dismember you. me. Yeah, yeah. He'd, like dismember me and eat me, and yeah. you know. Um, but it's just this weird thing where it's like, yeah, you're such a tough guy because you're in the mafia, because you're in this organization mm. that that has a bunch of people at their disposal. Yeah, you're not with, with you're, guns, yeah. and they'll hide you out, and yeah. yeah, that's not how tough can you possibly be? And it's arguments. I mean, it's all like it's just about money, yeah. right? Like yeah. at the, they're not like it's not like they're. There's any sort of honor involved. Not that there's an honorable yeah. killing. Everyone who's ever been in the mafia is a pussy. <laughs> That's what I want to say. I have a lot of respect for our uh, various families, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I do not. Not these are the opinions of Mike. I I love everybody. No, obviously you guys know that I'm joking around, and I have the utmost respect. <laughs> I have the utmost, the utmost respect for Italian American immigrants who came over here and made their own way. I'm obviously joking around. This is satire. You guys know I have nothing but respect for all of you. However. However, which is that guy on the YouTube comment? Because like it's, it's satirical. This is satire. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy on the you. It's so funny because it's so many levels of like. So this guy on YouTube, he's really like a total bitch, right? Like he's living out his macho fantasy. He's pretending, through, just like yeah. every other wop in this yeah. country who <laughs> pretends that they're in the mafia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I'm sure all those mafia guys that you love so much are just on a message board late at night, <laughs> yeah. to typing comments <laughs> in their, on their computer, <laughs> on their mother's computer. <laughs> 
because you live at your mother's house. I want to. I want to write this guy's name. <laughs> I think his name was. I don't know. His name was like Joe something. Mm. Yeah, Joe Crapola. Yeah, that's your new name. Yeah, how do you? I, for, like I that? forget his real name, but mm. your new name is Joe Crapola. What if it was like somebody important? What if it was Barack Obama who wrote that message? He just got really into mafia culture for a minute after his presidency. Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> he just sends a drone. <laughs> I'm like, All right, well played, Obama. <laughs> Yeah, but there's nothing like, mm. unless you're one of the guys that's out there doing the actual, you know, dirty work. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Shut up. Exactly. It's this fake, like. And even then, they wouldn't. You're post- a baby. Yeah. You're a baby. You're hiding behind an organization. I'm just, I'm I'm actually the real tough. Podcasts yeah. are the real tough guys. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because we put our lives on the line every time we do this mafia podcast. Exactly. Anyway, we're talking to David Spector, everybody. That's uh, S-P-E-S-P-E-C-T-O-R. <laughs> yeah. That's a stage name. You'll, that's a, just a stage name. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway. All right. So, all right. So Bobby, got, Bobby gets popped. Bobby gets popped by Sirhan Sirhan. So mm-hmm. I think he left, his, he left that area, mm-hmm. either Jordan or Palestine, after Israel took over his yeah. family. They were Christian, though. His sister died of leukemia, I he think. Said. But everybody describes him, him as being like sort of a mild-mannered, nice guy who just like, who, um, who, now, like I said, I don't have sources for this. I did mm-hmm. read a few. I read an article in, in yeah. Washington Post. Mm. Um, but uh, he didn't have any criminal record. Mm. Okay, and there's a bu- there's a lot of questionable stuff uh, from that assassination. Well, let's give let's give um, we'll get to the case against it, but the case for it mm-hmm. is that uh, he had a notebook where he said, "I'm gonna kill Bobby Kennedy," written mm-hmm. on every single page. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in the kitchen. Yeah, he had a gun. Yeah, he was like Bobby Kennedy must die at this on this date. Yes. Yeah, I mean he definitely did it. He gave Robert Frost an interview that you sent me where he admitted to it. Robert said, Fro- the no, poem. Yeah, the not, no, no. Who's the yeah. other guy? David Frost. Oh, uh, who cares? The British guy. Yeah. The he did an interview with him uh, where he said he did it. He said there was no conspiracy, but in that interview and in other interviews I've seen with him, he does say he does not remember actually pulling the trigger. Right. He doesn't remember. He'll never say he actually remembers doing it. Right. So that's the case, and the reason he gave for killing Bobby Kennedy is that even Bobby Kennedy's doing this big, you know, I stand for the little guy, I'm helping the farm workers, I stand for black and brown people in this country, mm-hmm. we're going to really make change here. Mm-hmm. And then he gave a speech saying he would uh, sell weapons to Israel. Right. He was yeah. going to send like 50 jets or something to Israel. And yeah. I guess – so, so right. So Sirhan Sirhan mm. felt genuinely betrayed by Bobby Kennedy. Now, yeah. I don't know what was going on, um, you know, like I don't know, maybe he had some kind of mental illness or something. Yeah. But, but yeah, you're right. Bobby Kennedy presented himself as – he mm. was a rat yeah. in a lot of ways. He presented himself as being this like, yeah, I'm for the downtrodden. I'm for the little guy. And mm. then after the Seven Days War, he was like, we're going to send more jets to yeah. – um, to Palestine as or to, to Israel to yeah as Jay I don't Biden. recognize the state of Israel <laughs> you don't no, I, no oh, I, you're taking on the mob and Israel on this podcast yeah who can be more annoying <laughs> <laughs> which fans are more annoying Israel, <laughs> Israel or the mob <laughs> you know actually um uh we uh we have a Chipotle <laughs> we have a Chipotle in Israel so <laughs> your loss uh we put but, hummus on it you don't get hummus at the Chipotle's here yeah. So uh, that's uh, why Sir Anne, Sir Anne said he did it. Mm-hmm. And Bobby Kennedy has his big uh, victory party in California. Now, here's the thing. They never teach you in school like the like we just it's really weird. This this thing where, you know, you study because I, I always liked history. Mm-hmm. You study American history. It's just all this like assassinations and riots and mm-hmm. shit like that. And they never they never even go near like the motives of. Of, I'm not saying you know go out and kill kill a Kennedy, but they never get close to the motives of what these people are going through. Yeah, or what? Like you just like you just like oh yeah he was like Palestinian and he didn't like yeah Bobby Kennedy. Um, but yeah, yeah they never really. It was always very vague whenever it would be discussed. Yeah, and like I didn't even know there were conspiracies around this until recently. Yeah, but basically. So Bobby Kennedy has a, he gives his victory speech. He's supposed to go to the next room 
mm-hmm. where there is a mariachi band playing, doing a victory concert for mm. him. The woman who was his, like, she was on his campaign, she was his, like, Hispanic outreach person mm-hmm. uh, or whatever she was doing on the campaign. She was supposed to lead him there. At the very last second, she's intercepted. Someone else brings Bobby Kennedy back to the kitchen. Mm. There's no real reason why he's back there. It wasn't the plan. Oh. Bobby Kennedy doesn't know what to do, so he starts shaking the hands of the staff. He assumes, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to you know, say hi to everybody who's here. That's mm-hmm. why I'm here. Mm-hmm. And then he is shot execution style. Mm-hmm. Now Sirhan Sirhan is at the scene. Mm-hmm. He has a gun. Uh, he is arrested for it. Yeah. Uh, he has a notebook saying he was going to do it. And he's admit to it in other interviews. He has a motive. So that's that's the case for Saran Saran doing this. Bobby Kennedy's was shot execution style. Every wit- in the back of the head. In the back of the head. Every witness at, in the kitchen said that Sirhan Sirhan was several yards, feet away. Yeah, yeah, several feet away. Yeah, not close enough for execution style. Mm-hmm. But there was a man who was close enough to do have done that. He was Bobby Kennedy's uh, security agent. Mm-hmm. Um. His security guard had been on tape trashing the Kennedy, saying he hates them, mm-hmm. wishes them ill. Mm-hmm. And in the trial, he was given immunity and did not have to testify. Hmm. Um, additionally— Right, because how would somebody get that close to him? I mean, it wasn't like it is today where there's Secret Service everywhere. It's yeah. like okay. literally just— Really? Yeah. It was like—it was way freer. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had the president getting driven around in a like JFK in like a, a roofless car. I mean, mm-hmm. RFK did the same thing. Or, or I don't know if his mm-hmm. I don't know his middle name, but Bobby Kennedy did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was just like way more accessible for your the way uh, back then. Mm-hmm. So he was just like in the if kitchen. They try to shoot Bernie. They're gonna have to go through Nina Turner first, <laughs> and that is not someone you wanna. No, she starts yelling at the assassin. Oh yeah, so, makes him feel bad. She makes him go back to school. She fucking rules. She's great. Oh, yeah. 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 I wait. I mean, she fucking rules. She's the best fucking surrogate for Bernie. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh. They can say the word <laughs> racist and misogynist, <laughs> but maybe we just have very high standards for black women. <laughs> and Nina Turner meets them. <laughs> so the mob, right. Israel, and uh, black women. These are the yeah. These are the people. You're no, it's also crazy. Like I mean, j- just looking. Y- I mean, yeah. you should be able to see who you're dealing with. Looking at the hate that she gets. Oh yeah, and she gets you know? full blown racist, yes. misogynistic from like not just randos, but mm-hmm. like actual fucking people, journalists, yeah. and people like yeah. establishment people. Just the the I've never seen. There was just this interview with her where. She was on MSNBC, and she called uh, Bloomberg an oligarch, and MSNBC mm-hmm. lost their minds. I saw that, yeah. I, I thought it was CNN, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe, I don't care. Whichever it was, I just never had seen somebody who worked on a campaign get treated with so much contempt and disrespect, mm-hmm. ever. Yeah. They just talked down to her like she's uh, nothing. Yeah. Uh, you think she could be her, his running mate? Bernie, maybe, I, I would love it. If yeah. he gets the nomination, don't go fucking for Warren. Don't go any no, of no, no, Just no, no, put no. her there and see what – she would be so much better than anybody else. Yeah. Just fucking, you want to really fucking listen to Amy Klobuchar talk yeah, ever yeah. again in your life? Or do you want to hear Nina Turner? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea what the fuck will happen by then. Yeah. Um. So Bobby Kennedy, he's in the kitchen. So he's got the security guard there. Witnesses all said they heard either two guns or I believe 13 rounds. I might be... I think it was 13 rounds. 13 rounds. Well, but well, they yeah, but, didn't know but, if it was two guns or just 13 rounds because they're like, bang, 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 bang. But Sir Hans, Sir Hans' gun only held eight bullets or something. There, yeah. there is pretty clear audio of that, right? Mm. And then also an autopsy came out yeah. um, about like like mm. pretty uh, like pr- pretty official yeah. saying that he was shot in the back of the head. Yes. Yeah. And so basically they heard more bullets. They either heard two guns or more bullets than Sir Hans, Sir Hans' gun uh, could hold. Mm-hmm. And... The LAPD had recovered all of the bullets that would have fit in his gun, but every eyewitness is like, no, no, there's definitely another bullet. I heard one more bullet. It wasn't just yeah. this. Yeah. Years and years. Right, there's a lot of people around, right? Yes. Tons of people. Yeah. Years gonna, are we going to talk about the woman in the polka dot dress? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Yeah. All right. Years and years Thank later. Thank you for coming to the show and knowing something about something. It's <laughs> really, I mean, you're doing me a huge favor. I probably am getting all sorts of shit wrong. Your listeners are probably going to get mad. Who cares? But... <laughs> nah, they don't get mad. 
They're, why don't you go and say to this Sir Hans, Sir Hans? They might, they might pussy. threaten. They might, yeah, they might. Right, right, right. They might threaten to kill you on YouTube. Like, <laughs> James Crapola is not, <laughs> not going to do a fucking thing. You can't even hurt me. I'm not even afraid of you. Come to my house. You know where to find me. I'm not hard to find, bitch. So, See if your mother will drive you on my <laughs> to Bushwick because we know you live in Bensonhurst on your couch. You fucking James Crapola. <laughs> That's gonna be the that should be the title of the episode, James Crapola. There you go. Yeah. Come fight me, James Crapola. Come find me, James Crapola. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you say it to his face? <laughs> okay, I guess I'll get in my car and drive to Kansas where the where they're holding this guy. <laughs> Just I'll a mass murderer Missouri, yeah. who's also been in prison for who knows how long. Yeah, and yeah, And you yeah. just come over and it's like, hey, I just He can't, can't control what he sounds like. <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, this is bullying, okay? Yeah. You're bullying this man. Yeah. So uh, years and years later, though, turns out there was a door frame the mm. LAPD had. With an extra bullet in it mm -hmm. that they had suppressed. They mm. had never let out, but they had it in Who evidence. suppressed it? The LAPD. Why? Uh, they didn't want it. It, it contradicted the narrative they built mm. and the mm -hmm. case they had against Saran Saran. Right. So, um, I mean, I guess that is part of the, you know, like if, if there's a high profile assassination, you want to yeah. like find somebody, pin it on him, and then like that's it. Exactly. You know? Now, let a, and don't forget that Saran Saran says he. He says he remembers everything up until killing Bobby Kennedy. Yeah. And he remembers everything after, but he doesn't remember Just the pulling the trigger. Yeah. yeah. Meaning if there was like a CIA MK Ultra type situation, mm -hmm. that would add up. Mm hmm. Um, now look, I wish I had like more information handy about MK Ultra, and like I mean, this is what I found from some article, hmm. some BBC article. So like, basically, what happened was I guess somebody, allegedly, right? Yeah. Somebody approaches Sirhan Sirhan, and they're like, "Hey, I'm from the fucking CIA." Yeah. And they train and they start training him, I guess, mm. to. But um, so this says this is from the Washington Post beginning in 1949 as the Cold War was heating up CIA, the CIA under Alan Dulles launched a project called Bluebird, later called Artichoke and then Project MK Ultra, a mm -hmm. series of experiments on w unwitting people to see if their minds could be manipulated by drugs, torture or hypnosis. Yeah. Colleges, hospitals, prisons and pharmaceutical companies participated in the project. Records revealed in the 1970s showed with the CIA hoping to be able to manipulate foreign leaders and other important figures or program others to commit acts of espionage. Mm. In Canada, some subjects were kidnapped off the street. Mm. Crazy. Yep. Can you imagine you just get Jeez. thrown in a van and then they feed you like a ton of acid and just try to get you to assassinate like the president of uh, It doesn't Bolivia? even seem like, yeah, there's any, there's any, which is probably why they had to have that second shooter there. Yeah. They just needed a guy with a gun and then it's not like anyone had camera phones or anything. or Exactly. And it's right? pandemonium. And I don't think Bobby Kennedy was the only person who got shot. I think another guy got shot back there okay. too. I think six people were wounded. Six people were wounded. Yeah. So LSD was administered administered to some subjects, and professors at Stanford and UCLA participated in M in MK Ultra mm. record show. So, uh, you have, and then there's the woman with the po polka dot dress. Mm -hmm. Some people at the event say they saw a woman wearing a polka dot dress running down the stairs with a guy, and they're like, "We did it! We killed Bobby Kennedy! Like, we got him! We got him!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, what I read in this Washington Post article was yeah. that they identified that woman. Really, I forget her name. Her name was like Elaine something, mm. and she ended up being married to some CIA agent. Really? Yeah, but in nineteen, but they weren't married in nineteen sixty eight. But they started having an affair in nineteen sixty eight. Okay, and I guess she, because Sirhan Sirhan describes the night of the assassination being like he meeting some attractive mm. woman in a yeah. polka dot dress. You know, I like to imagine like what she looks like. She probably uh -huh. had, you know, she probably had nice thighs. Mm. Like not hu probably not huge tits, but well, it was the seventies, right? So it was a yeah, nobody had big tits back. Yeah, then. definitely probably like long, like probably reddish brown curly hair. I want to say. Mm -hmm. Um. Probably just very sweet, you know, the kind of person who could like really understand you. And you know, she had like a seventies haircut or a sixties haircut, I think, <laughs> um, like really big. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but uh, so he was like, I think he saw, mm. he recognizes this woman. Yeah, he sees his attractive woman. He like th this, she said they were gonna get coffee or something. Uh, I don't know this part. This okay. I did not know he met the woman in the polka dot dress. 
he like met her and then she led him somewhere. Interesting. And then I think that's like the last thing that he that he remembers. And now, she was just so happy to be dating a CIA agent at the time. She was having an affair with a CIA. Agent. Having an affair, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I I didn't know that detail. Yeah. Now another thing I want to bring up is, you know, Saran Saran's arrested. He's tried for this. Uh, Ted Kennedy actually wrote a letter saying, please don't give him the death penalty. Yeah. They gave him the death penalty anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think then California outlawed the death penalty. Okay. Uh, yeah, or, cause he was like really surprised that Ted Kennedy did that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he killed his brother. Yeah. Um, but also RFK's son met with Sirhan Sirhan and like, doesn't think that he did it. His son. And I think the, one of the higher, a guy in the kitchen mm -hmm. at the time of the assassination who was a higher up on the campaign is also doesn't believe that it was Sirhan Sirhan. Mm -hmm. Now, it's entire, remember, the Kennedys, uh, bootlegging, then they're in the government, they're shady as fuck, they sold steel to the Nazis, mm -hmm. they tur they used the mob, then turned on the mob, they have tons of enemies. Mm -hmm. And not to mention JFK turning on the CIA after right. they botched uh, the Bay of Pigs. Trees. Trees. They hit enemies. trees, uh, pl small planes. Yeah. Uh, wooden, you know, bridges. They have a lot of enemies. Why? Who? Somebody died in a Chopaquitic. He drove oh, right, off the right. bridge and then, yeah. Right, right. So, Malin Pavletic, who's been on the show a couple of times, said that, like, they, one of the Kennedys had a daughter and she, like, married a Protestant and then she died and the mom wouldn't go to the funeral. Oh, for real? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, Gangster. and there's tons of other Kennedys who have died. Mm -hmm. We haven't even talked about every fucking Kennedy who has died in some weird fucking way. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, but one thing I want to say about the trial of Sirhan Sirhan is that his own lawyers performed hypnosis on him to get him to plead guilty. Really? He didn't want to, so they got a hypnotist in, mm -hmm. and I think they hired psychologists to— Yeah, but didn't they also like have him, like psychologists analyzed him, and they said that he was under a state of hypnosis when he, they when said he killed— I think so. I think psychologists said there was something really wrong with his head. Something, but, but also even when they, this is interesting. When they when they uh, subdued him, mm. he wasn't struggling. He wasn't like they said. He was just very calm. Yeah. So I would love to do some more research on. Huh, like I haven't said that before, but uh, <laughs> but I would love to do some more research on like how that how the mind control actually like works and what they're doing and if it works we don't know if it ever actually right yeah because allegedly like you can't hypnotize someone to do something against their will mm. so maybe they had to find a guy who like did want to kill bobby but how i don't know i mean they could have found him at the right moment when mm. he was sad about the palestine stuff mm -hmm. and then it's like and then just like kept nudging him to yeah. this point yeah or he didn't fire a single bullet Mm -hmm. uh, I mean that's Yeah but there's audio of the yeah. bullets But it could have been somebody else with the gun And then they play it, planted it on him uh -huh. And he was in some sort of fugue state mm -hmm. So Yeah it doesn't take a lot to just shoot someone in the back of the head Especially when yeah. there's confusion going on It seems like And Bobby Kenny has no fucking clue what he's doing in this kitchen He just right. won the California primary Right. Like it's nice right, yeah, right, 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 right. It's a normal politic, you know, it's a nice of him to shake everyone's hand, but he had no idea he was going back there or yeah. was planning to do that. I'll tell you what, it is a pretty well executed plan. Yeah. Bringing him to the kitchen, mm. having the guy, all they needed was someone firing a gun. Yeah. But then I guess it's dumb to like shoot him in the back of the head because that's going to come back to you eventually. Yeah. But I but, guess they didn't think it would. I mean, they didn't think it would. It was, you know, we didn't have all the shit. Like you said, there's no smartphones like filming it. Yeah. I mean, now it would be on World Star, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I just hope they don't kill Bernie and AOC. Oh, uh, I mean, I hope that too, yeah. But I, it's wild. I mean... You just never know what's... I don't know. I mean, it's like the CIA works for big business. Like, it's mm -hmm. all one criminal blob. Mm -hmm. So, like, if Bernie wins, I mean, who the fuck knows? Yeah. It would be... I think that if Bernie, I don't know what, the, I don't know. I can't predict anything. I can't even fucking know I who know. won the Iowa caucus. It's, I know. yeah. Yeah. But who cares? Yeah. Um, all right. So before we wrap up, why don't we talk, a, or, or is there anything else you wanted to say about um, Bobby? Look, our point is that the CIA yeah. was using mind control on Sirhan Sirhan. There's a lot of evidence out yeah. there. That's what, that's, uh, that's yeah. honestly, I'm not a big like conspiracy mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. But I think that's what was happening. I mean, something, I don't know. He was intercepted and something happened. Definitely. And I think you should try to get. And now I'm going to act smarter than everybody for the rest of my life. <laughs> you should try to get Sirhan Sirhan on the podcast. We should. Yeah. I think you could. Yeah. I'll make fun of him to his face. 
<laughs> yeah, so the, yeah, that's that's uh, I guess that's a pretty good overview. That's as good as I can provide. All right, cool. So the last thing I want to ask you about yeah. is can we talk a little bit about yeah. because I'm just, you know, ever since I've been doing this podcast, I've just been like connecting these dots, these, mm. you know, like yeah. you just get these breadcrumbs mm. here and there. Um, so I've always heard people talk about the CIA and how yeah. bad they are and blah, blah, blah. And then like they made that Jack Ryan show, mm. which I don't know if you watched that. But no. It just wasn't. It just wasn't very good. Mm. It's crazy to like, I don't know, you look at modern American politics yeah. and you just, it's, it's very, it's very, very rare when you feel like someone is being honest with you. Yes. There is so much, and you don't even realize it till you, because mm. I feel like I go through these phases, right, in yeah. my life. Like, I go through, when I was in my early 20s, mm. I definitely went through this sort of, like, conspiracy phase where mm. I, you know, I watched, like, Zeitgeist or whatever it was, mm. and I was, like, 9-11, you know, yeah. inside job. And then, and then it's, like, you go through other, you, you kind of, like... Not that not that I don't still have questions, but you kind of outgrow it a little bit, and you're like you're like, well, no one's really that powerful, mm. and it could have been like they could have just been trying to fly planes into the building, <laughs> and not even think they they were going to collapse the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe it was this perfect storm of like the the building being built so shoddy, mm. the building not being built to code or like whatever it was yeah, yeah, yeah. that it just fucking collapsed. And mm. also you would think that if a building is going to collapse, mm. it's going to collapse on itself and not topple over. So it doesn't right. It would be like less damage. That was what the architect said. Cause a lot of people were mad at the architect and he said, mm -hmm. well, look, if the buildings didn't fall the way they did, they would have taken out like all of downtown Manhattan. They would. Yeah. If they like, f like, like that, like if a tree they toppled over. or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would have been fucked up. That would have been ins insane. Yeah, just imagine like you're just finishing up your shift at Subway restaurants. <laughs> just the twin, <laughs> one of the twin towers falls on you. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that would have been it. right because those buildings are so are so big. Yeah, and you've got fucking steel and debris and glass everywhere, and yeah, you don't want that shit toppling over. And then you're that's gonna cause fires and fucking yeah, for, it would be a nightmare. Right, just kill the three thousand <laughs> bad, bad, bad people who are in that building. That um, is like, as an adult, because like I, as a kid, when I heard about it, I mean, obviously, nine eleven was bad, of course. But I, as an adult, it never like until I was an adult, it never like kicked in why they went after the Pentagon, the Capitol, and the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. Like they were going after specific people. symbols of yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, I mean, a lot of people in those buildings were just people going to their jobs. But I, I used to have a joke about that where I'm yeah. like, there's no way that everybody who died in 9-11 mm -hmm. was like a nice person. <laughs> and I did that on stage in Pelham, New York one time, and they got very upset. Oh, but man. I'm like, no, but come on. You just think about it's all like finance people. Yeah. And then Larry Silverstein, who was like supposed to be there. But, oh, my wife made me a, an appointment at the dermatologist <laughs> and I couldn't make it. <laughs> you know, get the fuck out of here, you fucking scumbag. You fucking shameless. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Very, very weird. What if you had like missed nine eleven because, but you were doing something really embarrassing that you didn't want your family to know about? <laughs> You're buying gay porn. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, I left my office to get a donut. <laughs> you know, I remember they were having this deal at. Uh, I hadn't had a chocolate glazed in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. What else? What other embarrassing thing could you be doing? You're. Just, he's just like, I don't know. Probably more weird sex shit. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, in a gimp's mask, tied up. Yeah, yeah. And then the towers fall, and he's just like <laughs> reacted the mask. He's yeah, yeah, crying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> I left my office to get a bagel, and the wife was like, "I made you breakfast. You didn't eat it." He's like, "He's like, no, I threw it right in the trash." <laughs> and she's like, "I can't believe you lied to me. I want a divorce." <laughs> you still get divorced anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, like, look, I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what, Larry, maybe, Larry, I'm sure Larry Silverstein's a very nice guy. Mm -hmm. I remember I was home one time, my sister was watching this Bravo show, mm -hmm. and uh, this guy, this guy. The Real like, Housewives of 9-11. No, but it, yeah, but it's some, like, you know, New York real estate yeah. show, and this guy goes to visit Larry Silverstein, he's like, mm -hmm. wow, Larry Silverstein, he's like a legend in New York real estate, mm -hmm. and Silverstein's like, he seems like a nice, you know, like mm -hmm. a nice, yeah jovial old man mm. he's like yeah you know I, I was supposed to be in this building and uh my wife said you can't go to work today and i said why and she goes i made you an appointment at the dermatologist and i would have been in that building eating breakfast if uh she hadn't done that his wife so, orchestrated the attacks well it's <laughs> like like fucking hell the guy yeah. who owns the building 
uh, and took out it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he like owned the building or something. Mm. And he took out this. He alleged. I mean, allegedly. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I I should probably corroborate this information. Mm. I'm sure someone will write. He it took in. out an insurance policy on it. That's allegedly. Allegedly. Uh-huh. Alleg- those in in certain circles. Yeah. Right now, maybe somebody could debunk that for me. But this is. Can what. you get like? Would that insurance policy pay? Like when they when he it bought, like covered terrorism or something. Really? Well, there's also the. Let's w- look it up after the show. Sure. There's also the. Where we could pause the show and look it up now. Whichever. There's the All thing right. that I had heard real quick where the U.S. Uh, military had had a war games exercise in the Northeast where they had all of the available aircrafts like doing war games mm-hmm. and unable to respond to the attacks. Just happened to be on the same day. Oh, really? Yeah. I had heard yeah. something like that. And then, like, NORAD was down or something. All this yeah. shit that I know nothing about, uh-huh. and then I become an expert on it because <laughs> I watch one documentary. Um, okay, let's let's pause and... Yeah. But anyway, the point that I was trying to make earlier was that if that happened, if, yeah. if you know, if our boy Larry Silverstein yeah. blew up his own building, mm. I'm sure he has to convince himself that, like, the official story was real and... and uh, It'd be so funny if he blew up those buildings and then just goes on Bravo. <laughs> no, I think he did. I think he is. That is. I so think it's funny. probably. I think. I. I don't think anybody is like that much of a. Most people aren't that much of yeah. psychopaths. Mm. But he probably like has to convince himself that the official story really happened. We got attacked by terrorists, yeah. and and then we sent our brave military to go fight the terrorists overseas. Here's and he my... has to convince himself of this whole thing, and he's like, "Oh yeah, my wife made a dermatologist appointment," and that's why he's going on. That's why he's not embarrassed to go yeah. on this TV show because he's he has to convince yes. himself to like go insane. Well, here's why I would say he would he wasn't behind it himself. Mm-hmm. It's just like. Presumably, oh, Jew sticking up for another Jew. <laughs> people really look out for each other. Presumably, there was. I shit. throw Italians under the bus all the time. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, presumably, there was shit in the World Trade Center that the government would have wanted. Mm-hmm. So I think, like, probably the government tipped him off. Mm-hmm. Like it's just a cabal. Mm-hmm. But you, right. like, I think he would have been like, "Hey, you get first dibs, and then we'll just, you know." Blow up Tower Seven or whatever. Look at that face, though. I mean, he's fucking evil. Oh no, he did it. Okay, never he mind. Did it, he yeah. did it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. He's hiding something. <laughs> Just look at that smile. <laughs> that, like half. The, yeah. On his Wikipedia page, eighty-eight years old. Probably gonna. He's gonna live to be like a hundred years old. Yeah. He's gonna. You know. Uh Okay. So let's. My wife this. said, "Wait, you're powerful enough to own the twin towers." And your wife is telling you when you are and aren't allowed to go to work? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. She's like, yeah, she's making his. She's like, I made you an appointment with the um, with the baby blood doctor. <laughs> you're gonna go. You're gonna go drink baby blood to keep your skin. You know how you're 88, but you look se- you look 79. <laughs> well, you have to go to one of those appointments. Anyway, uh, insurance policy. Okay, Larry Silverstein insurance policy. All right, okay. Now this is Snopes.com. Now, I, I, like I said, I have a feeling. Soon, this is Wikipedia. Soon after the September 11th attacks, 2001, Silverstein declared his intent to rebuild. Though his insurers, though he he and his insurers became embroiled in a multi-year dispute over whether the attacks had con- constituted one event or two mm. under the terms of the insurance policy. Oh, that is so funny. Maximum, that is so funny. The what? insurance is like. Uh, yeah. no, this stuff like it was only one <laughs> incident. It's like, no, it's two. <laughs> that is <hilarious. laughs> just, just, like, just a bunch of Jews arguing over like how much money to pay out <laughs> of 9 11 after 9 11. You don't want to fuck with me. You don't want to fuck with me, David. I'll see you in court, Larry. <laughs> I'm not a yeah. Um, you gotta hand it to Jews though. Okay, Snopes.com. Did a World Trade Center leaseholder buy terrorism insurance just before 9-11? I mean, what are they going to say? Yes. Rating a mixture. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, folks. There's our answer. <laughs> he probably called Snopes.com and was like, can you, can you change it to false? And they were like, no, Larry. And he was like, how about mixture? And they're like, all right. We'll see what we can do. He had to go to the dermatologist to put his skin suit back on. He's yeah. just like, uh, 
claim World Trade Center leaseholder Larry Silverstein bought terrorism insurance two months before 9-11, then collected double its value on the grounds that there were two attacks. Rating mixture. Uh, just months before 9-11, the World Trade Center's lease was sold to Larry Silverstein. Silverstein took out an insurance policy that fortuitously covered terrorism. Now, you would think all those buildings are covered for ter- but terrorism, but there was an attack in 93 yeah. on the World Trade Center. So, so that, makes, not, that makes sense. Yeah, that's not a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. So why don't all you fucking conspiracy <laughs> losers get a fucking job? Stop stop shaming a, a hardworking Jewish entrepreneur who's 88 <laughs> years old and just wants to provide for his family. You fucking scumbag. Get a life, I hater. was gonna go, Get a life, haters. I was going to go to work that day, but my wife made me an appointment at Little St. James Island, yeah. and I couldn't make it in. I had to have lunch with my good friend Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> No, his his wife goes. His wife goes. Uh, Larry, you can't go to work today. I made you an appointment with the dermatologist, <laughs> and it's just Je- it's just Jeffrey and Galen. <laughs> and they went to the new Chevys in Times Square and had had sizzling fajitas. <laughs> uh, while the story obviously contains elements of fat, I love this fucking look at this meme. Look at this fucking meme. <laughs> oh my god. Here, describe that, David. Just okay. So. It's uh the, the Jewish odor of the Twin Towers. <laughs> I know. This is, this is pretty anti-Semitic. <laughs> Standing over the smoking wreckage of 9-11. Like he's... And he's got this smirk on his face like, oh, well. He's looking over like a Bond villain would if a Bond villain just like blew up. The yeah. T- yeah. The, the Twin Towers or something. And then it says, did you know just months before 9-11, the World Trade Center's lease was sold to Larry Silverstein? Silverstein took out an insurance plan that uh, fortuitously covered terrorism. After 9-11, Silverstein took the insurance company to court, claiming he should be paid double because there were two attacks. (laughs) You know, it would dishonor the victims if he was not paid double. (laughs) Wait a minute. So did he get enough to rebuild both buildings? He won and was awarded $4,550,000,000. Great. Um, I mean, I do think that, like, they were attacked before— he mm-hmm. it did just transfer into his name. It would make sense name. that would he make would sense. buy yeah. okay. terrorism insurance. Right. Yeah. So it's it is a mix. And look, you know. We're not trying to trash anybody on this show. Mm. I mean, I'll make fun of Tommy Patera, but <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna disrespect the the, the Jewish people. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. Why why do that? Yeah. All right. Well, I do want to look into this more, but nine eleven. My fiance is doing dishes very loudly in the. <laughs> anyway, uh, do you want to um, do you want to plug anything? Uh, uh, follow me on uh Twitter and Instagram. Instagram at raw sexuality. Twitter at spector divorce. You want to check out the Iowa results? Yeah. Did they did they update them? I don't know. It just says Buttigieg leads a tight race. Great. But I don't think it's been updated since then. Yeah. Um. All right, everyone. Politics is a waste of time. Do not. I can't wait to be an old liberal with a gray ponytail lecturing my <laughs> kids about about the perils of leftism and progressivism and progressive podcasting. Oh, uh, yeah. Remember, if it's not Bernie, don't vote. Just don't vote. Yeah. You don't have to vote. No, I just want to be like a I just want to be like an old lib- an old mm. rich liberal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Who like goes to like, you know, hip hop shows by himself <laughs> to scold everyone. Yeah, he tells his wife he's going to a strip club and he just goes to underground hip hop shows <laughs> in a baseball hat and sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right everybody, thanks for listening. Like I said, if you don't mind kicking us a couple bucks on Patreon, we really appreciate it. And guys, we don't have ads, okay? Mm. I refuse to give any of those fucking pigs at Blue Apron my money or my my support. Mm. Um and uh we are sponsored you are sponsored by the CIA though this episode, right? Yes. No, we tra- we we this is anti-CIA. Well, we started with the commercial though. We are we are paid a little bit of money by the Silverstein Foundation <laughs> to, just, to just paint our buddy Larry in a good light, and uh, we do thank you for that. He gives he gives us a hundred bucks a month. Basically, every episode of the show we debunk 
uh, the fact that he orchestrated 9-11. He spent the entirety of his insured settlement on various podcasts. Mm-hmm. And you know what I do with that money? I spend it on Blue Chew, folks. <laughs> need a little extra Need a little extra help? <laughs> Not being paid to say this. Get uh, get Blue Chew right now. No, support us on Patreon. Uh, sitdownpod at gmail.com. Sitdownpod at social media. Follow me on Twitter, at Mike Racine. Follow David uh, on his social media. Follow me on Instagram, Racine Mike. Thank you for listening, folks, and uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.